Well, I'm having trouble putting this up, the videos that's going out on me, so I'll try it again. This is Larry Flint, who was shot in Lawrenceville, Georgia. I was writing a book on mind control, programming people and uh, modifying behavior, and they program programming them to uh, shoot and kill and try and keep my voice down. There's some people outside there. Uh, he did an endorsement April of 84 and said I knew who was responsible for his shooting. This, I was kidnapped and brought to Moulton, Alabama in 41 from London, England. This is me. This was made in 43, and I was two years old when in 41. So this is Lina Dempsey. She had twins that were born out of wedlock, and she'd killed them. The family covered it up. So I'm going to skip to try to get this up. Uh, after I was out Mr. Flint's in a political campaign, he furnished me a car, and I'm leaving a bunch of stuff out. It's on YouTube if you care to go back. It's about mass murders like Virginia Tech and uh, being programmed, the people being programmed to kill. I wanted to get, though, when I came here, and uh, I actually lived on Appalachian Trail, froze, starved. People were told not to help me. Of course, they didn't have to follow those orders. Um, but anyway, it's been a rough life, and I was deliberately kept homeless, deliberately. And I wanted to show this, and maybe I won't go into all the background on it. I've done it on other tapes so I can get this up. Uh, the last few days I've been really worked over. I'm allergic to chemicals. I have an immune disorder. If I'm around toxic fumes, then... Um, uh, my immune system shuts down, and you have to get away from it. You have to not breathe the toxic fumes. So I'm just going to quote this. I've put it on other tapes, um, and I'm going to refer, because they made my word no good, to Carl Barton, retired Virginia State Trooper. His wife said to me, August 14th of 09, uh, this is how we run you with chemicals. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there to try to get this up. The force, when I was in the forest, uh, forestry, let me mind you, they kidnapped me from England, and I can think you can imagine where I'm supposed to live. Grew up in a pigsty, and uh, they've made uh, a pauper out of me. That's what Mr. Flint said, too, uh, and they have. And, and um, what they've done when they would arrest me and run me, and people say, you're running from the law, yeah, they would uh, uh, charge me with um, living in the national for residential, uh, using it for residential purposes. This has been a sick, sick joke. You would have to see it. So anyway, Eric Smith was part of it, and he's the one I wanted to, if I can get this up. Uh, but um, Kathy Nichols, who was over the agriculture, which over the forestry, uh, she and a guy named Woody, who played uh, in the movie of Larry Flint, played Larry Flint. I'm trying to show you some patterns. They fit together, but they're scattered at the moment. The movie opened here in Roanoke uh, on the, birth the birthday I used, January the 7th, when it opened. So I'm just showing a, sh a few patterns of what's happened. Um, here's one. They gave me a violation there. And I want to show this. Um, it, he gave it to me on 3604. Well, Larry Flint was shot uh, March the 6th, 78, obviously. But you can follow me a little there in the movie, having Woody Harrelson play the part. And um, it was Eric that was there when they were doing the patterns right in front of the TV when they locked me up. But they didn't say that. But Woody was there, Eric was there, and Kathy Nichols, as in Brian Nichols from Atlanta, who murdered some people, was programmed, and Terry Nichols of the Oklahoma City bombing. So that's all I can get at uh, to try to show you. But it's been hell. Uh, so I'm just going to go to the last few days. Um, all the money I have is gone. As um, in the morning, I don't have anywhere to go, and what few things I have will be set out. So I'm not going to try to tell you how they, uh, over a few days, maneuvered and got uh, $500, which is all I had. But I, I went out Sunday, and a cab driver had um, answered that I knew years ago, and I trusted him, and I was surprised to see him. Well, he took me. I had to leave where I'm at at the moment. 
and I was really sick, um, and he took me, and then he brought me, yeah, he brought me back. What he did, he come and picked me up. He took me from here. That was $50. He uh, come and picked me up, and I was going to go out in the forest and try to camp because I was getting low on money, too, but I needed fresh air to breathe. And I can't go into what happened to me to the North Creek. I put it on campground. This is a national forest where you're supposed to live and go out, and most people do. It's a 16-site uh, campground, and they actually, over the years, Archie was one of the hosts. They would burn logs that soaked in formaldehyde. And I went up there in March, and then again, I think early April, they did the same thing, but they're, it was different hosts, and they're living in $200 uh, uh, home on wheels. So they burn it all night long, and it makes me urinate constantly. It takes all the water out of me, and I can't sleep. So it can kill you. I mean, it's horrible. So anyway, I'm telling you, um, I couldn't go back there. So this um, this person, this is, I don't know why he put his... Um, new car down here. Uh, his name is Alan Fullen, and I trusted him, but he shows up suddenly after all these years, and this is happening, and it makes me wonder, and I'm going to ask you the question, people. Uh, they scammed me. I know that Eric did, but uh, it was too put together. I asked him, Alan, to take me, uh, and I was going to pay him I forgot what I was going to pay him, not $100, but I was going to pay him to take me to Curry Creek. There's a place there uh, not far that um, you can get to in camp, and it's got water in the forest, and it's nice. Well, he has a GPS. I told him where I wanted to go, and he's from here. So I can't believe he couldn't put it if he didn't know up on GPS. He hunts and all that. And the more I thought about it after all of that happened, I knew that he was a part of it. It was planned. And it took every penny I have. And um, we went out. This is Sunday. And he drove all over the place. And it looked real to me like he really couldn't find it. Well, finally, uh, we called up because there was a spot I remembered up on um, the parkway, Blue Ridge. And he had to, cabs have to call to get an okay. He called, and they told him, at least he said that, that they wouldn't let him up there, that it, cabs couldn't come on Sunday. So I had to find another place, and I didn't know one. So finally, I, by this time, he's driving around. It looks like I'm putting him out, you know, causing him problems. And um, he's supposed to get back and turn the cab in and all this. Well, finally, we go one-fourth mile from North Creek. And there used to be a horse trail there and a place to camp. Well, you still is legal to camp, but it was grown up. It's not used, I guess, anymore. Well, my stuff was dumped out there, and there's water near there, but I can't even walk anymore, much less pull the stuff. And I put it down, and it was sprinkling rain, and I got back away from the road. It's um, way out in the forest, okay? And I... Got the tent up and I passed out, quite frankly. I was so tired. And before I know it, here's Eric. And you should see he was angry. Uh, I've put some of this stuff up on YouTube about the names and people that, that have done it. And evidently he is afraid or so mad that he come out there and started yelling at me and telling me he was going to get me for breaking tree limbs. Well, I said, can I take a picture? I had a camera. Of it. And he said, no, he's back down. He said, no, I'm not going to charge you, uh, but you're going to get that stuff out of here now and go. I mean, he was really mean. And uh, it was just a little bitty, a couple of them. It wasn't a limb. I can't even break them. And so I couldn't get my stuff up. He told me I was going to have to call the cab that had just brought me there, and I paid 100 bucks and go back now, or he was going to charge me. And he said, no, you live on a fixed income, so I, you're going to get out of here. And if I charge you, you know what that's going to be. So he called Alan. This is his car. It was a brand new one. He brought me out there in the cab. So here's the warning that he gave me. Uh, camping within 300 foot of, um, of what? The road is what he said. I'm not sure that's even right because all of it, they're the ones breaking the law. But what he did, he brought in a Fincastle cop, which really, um, 
got me. Why did he bring him? And I even asked him. I kept my voice down. 